Kingdom Hearts 3 is a very fun game to play, but after 13 years of waiting and the memorable experience that was Kingdom Hearts 2, I can't help but feel let down. Hi, I'm Katie360 from We Got Game. We cover all types of games from shooters to fighting games. We also have a bi-weekly podcast, so be sure to check that out. Before I get into the review, I'd like to share my credentials. I have the platinum trophy for this game. I did not play every Kingdom Hearts game before playing 3. I have played 1, 2, Birth by Sleep, and 0.2. I didn't want to play the rest. I know about all of the lore from reading wikis and watching summary videos, which is the reason I bought the game in the first place. Kingdom Hearts 2 was actually my first Kingdom Hearts game. I quit KH1 after leaving Destiny Island because I got too bored of it. Birth by Sleep is my favorite Kingdom Hearts game, and after playing this game, it still is. Enough about me, I want to start this video on a positive note, so I'm going to talk about what I enjoyed about the game before I get into why I was disappointed with this game. First of all, I would like to applaud Nomura for this game's combat. I know there's a lot of people who are disappointed with the way it works in this game, but I personally enjoyed it. I'm used to Kingdom Hearts being a button masher, and with all the cool options you had in this game. It made the experience enjoyable the whole way through in my opinion. The attractions, the transformations, flow motion, shot locks. I could come back to this game to fight hordes of Heartless and not get bored of it. If melding was a thing in this game, it might have been my favorite Kingdom Hearts game. If you didn't know, melding is a mechanic from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep that allows you to create commands by fusing two together. It also gives you an ability, depending on what material you use, to meld. So you could create your own custom move set for your character kind of and it was super sick and I loved it. Next up, I'd like to give a huge applause for changing the way gummy ships work in this game. In previous Kingdom Hearts titles, it kind of felt like a chore doing the gummy ship stuff and I didn't enjoy it. In this game, you're able to explore different galaxies, collect treasure, and fight hordes of enemies including some crazy bosses. I would find myself taking breaks from the story for hours at a time to explore the galaxies with my gummy ship and battle hordes of enemies to gain EXP and upgrade my ships, and I enjoyed every single second of it. I've probably spent 20 to 30 hours doing gummy ship stuff alone. Some people just wanted the gummy ship stuff to be gone altogether. I'm not gonna lie, I was one of those people, but I'm very happy with what we got instead. Thank you, Nomura. But you should have made it 60 frames per second. Moving on to the mini games, I actually enjoyed these quite a bit. I love going around the Caribbean, shooting down enemy ships, riding around in the robots, in the toy box. Cooking with Ratatouille was a blast too, unless you were missing ingredients for certain recipes. God, I hated getting honey in this game. It's unbelievably frustrating. While the execution of the story was very poor in my opinion, Nomura made sure people that were familiar with the game's story would be excited for what's in store for Kingdom Hearts games in the future. Wait, 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 wait. I forgot something really important. Dude, I love the selfie mechanic in this game. Bro, this stuff increases my lifespan, I swear. That's where the positive talk for this game ends. As much as I want to absolutely adore this game, there's so much wrong with it. And as much as I enjoyed the game, it was absolutely not worth the wait. In fact, this game may go down as my biggest disappointment of 2019. Why I was disappointed with Kingdom Hearts 3. Let's get the petty complaints out of the way first. Where the hell are the Final Fantasy characters? I wanted to team up with Cloud and Noctis to take on Sephiroth one last time. I'm one of the people that actually enjoyed Final Fantasy XV. I never pictured myself enjoying a fishing mini game until I played that game. The fact that I wasn't able to meet up with Noctis or Cloud to take on some Heartless was pretty disappointing to me. This game was way too easy. Proud mode feels like normal, and with Ultima Weapon it feels like beginner. There is no critical mode, and Nomura's reasoning for this is extremely silly. He said he wanted to make sure everyone enjoyed the game. You can pick the difficulty for a reason. I'm guessing what he meant was he didn't want people flexing on their friends for beating the game on a harder difficulty and risking ah, someone's feelings getting hurt. But even then, that's really nerd. silly. Critical, critical mode is being like added later. Man. But to be honest, I'm not trying to play this game until the DLC gets added. And it's a damn shame that we have to pay for more story content. But is anybody really surprised? Why in the world is there no world map? It's 2019 for God's sake. Why can I not get an overview of the world I'm in? This would have done wonders for me in Arendelle because I kept getting lost. 
While you're at it, put the lucky emblems and ingredient locations on this map too so people don't get frustrated looking for this stuff. While some of the music in the game was great, I didn't really care for the remixes I heard in the game. Also, I thought Face My Fears would have been a better song without Skrillex. Sue me. Why are we collecting crabs in the Caribbean to upgrade the ship? As much as I loved that world, I did not enjoy doing that. Why do Maleficent and Pete not play a major role in this game? Now let's get to the more serious complaints. A lot of the worlds in the game left a lot to be desired. When I first started the game and ended up in Olympus, I couldn't wait to get into the training hall with Phil and take on some more Heartless in the underworld. I was excited to get to a coliseum and duke it out with some crazy secret bosses. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting because I didn't get to do any of that. Instead, I got to explore the town and climb the mountains like I did in the demo at PAX Prime last year and at Disney World. Don't get me wrong, that's sick, but to find out that that was all there was to the world left me very disappointed. The worst part about this is that it's one of the best worlds in the game in my opinion, and that's not a good sign. There was so much more that they could have done with the worlds in this game. Some worlds just feel straight up empty or a shell of their former selves. <coughs> I'm looking at you Hundred Acre Wood and Twilight Town. Twilight Town is a shell of its Kingdom Hearts 2 self. You only have the main square and the mansion, and you can't even go inside. The worst part is that you can't even play Struggle anymore, or meet with Cypher again. Is this actually Kingdom Hearts 3? Because it sure doesn't feel like it. A Hundred Acre Wood only has three mini games. Three! It might as well have not been in the game. The Caribbean is my favorite world, but the story for it is extremely short if you only focus on that. Possibly the shortest world in the game. San Francisco is straight up false advertising, letting you think you can go explore the massive city when you're restricted to a pretty small space. I love flying around and grinding the rails in that world, but come on! Arendelle is just you constantly falling down a mountain and climbing it again, while sometimes having to reassemble Olaf. Speaking of worlds, Nomura said that there would be more than 10 worlds in the game, but guess what? There's 9! Get ready for that DLC. Sora didn't really feel part of some of the worlds in this game, especially the Kingdom of Corona and the Caribbean. The only purpose the worlds even serve in this game is to help Sora obtain the power of waking. But at the end of the day, the worlds didn't really contribute to the major plot. Speaking of the story, oh my god, lord help me. The story in this game was so terribly executed, it feels like I'm being spoon fed tiny, almost irrelevant stuff when going through the worlds, but once I'm done with all of them, it feels like they tried to shove a giant fan fiction buffet in my mouth. Even when the game was over, a lot of people still didn't understand what the hell was even going on. They took some time to explain the origins of Terra, but I don't, I don't recall the origins of the Keyblade War being explained. The memory archives were a waste. The stories are not told in the correct order, and some key parts of the story are even missing, like the events of Kingdom Hearts X. They tried to compensate for the sloppy pacing by adding a ton of fan service at the end of the game. And while that was really cool, it doesn't make up for the terrible execution of the story. Nomura said in the art book that the ending was rewritten you, multiple Aqua. times. The babies. game's intro should have had the memory archives explain each of the stories in order, or have certain stories explained as you complete each world. That would have been sick and it would have allowed the player to put the pieces together as they made more progress without going to the wiki or playing all the other games. The most disappointing thing about the game was the lack of content in it compared to the previous titles in the series. People were getting upset that so many trailers for KH3 were dropping because they were afraid Nomura was spoiling the game and you know what? They were 95% right. When I saw those trailers I would get so excited and watch all the trailer analysis videos thinking that there was way more more content being hidden away for the full release. Coming from previous Kingdom Hearts titles, you would think so too, right? Imagine my surprise when there wasn't. And no, this is not because of Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. This is me comparing it to the original Kingdom Hearts 2, which still had way more content than KH3. Hell, KH1 probably does too. Bigger worlds, more things to do, more exciting fights, stories that Sora actually felt a part of, proper pacing, etc, etc. I could go on and do this all day. Kingdom Hearts fans were right to be skeptical about the release because their worst fears came true, lacking content and little to no surprises, especially if you understand the story. For a game that's called Kingdom Hearts 3, 
This isn't the game I was looking forward to playing. This game fails to do the Dark Seeker saga justice with its terrible execution. The worst part is I'm pretty sure content was intentionally left out because Square knew that we would pay for DLC later. Once I'm finished with all of it, I'll probably never play this game again. Catch me playing Kingdom Hearts 2 and Birth by Sleep. It's a shame that Square has decided to exploit its passionate Kingdom Hearts fan base. As a passionate fan myself, it hurts me to say these things about a game I was so excited for. That concludes this review. If you enjoyed this content, Don't please subscribe. We have a bi-weekly podcast and cover all types of different games. Ciao.